Wins, as you probably all know, is not a software company. And sometimes in these very large organizations that have built their reputations on something other than software, it's very hard for software engineers to have any sort of recognition, momentum, dignity, and impact within the company. But Siemens did something very special. The team of people who are being awarded this year's Linda Northrup Award actually started a software initiative within Siemens that included a software curriculum. And apropos to this conference, this software curriculum had a focus on software architecture. So not only did the curriculum include all of the practices in architecting systems, focus on quality attributes, trade-offs, connection with business strategies, incorporation of new technologies, but also how to grow architects. There was built into this training initiative, mentoring, and hands-on interaction so that the architects who participated in this brought their architectures and learn how to apply the new practices on their architectures take it back to their organizations and continuously be mentored. What's really impressive to me is that these folks worked with human resources within Siemens so that this training was part of the training profile of Siemens employees and that there would be a career path for architects so that software architects would be recognized within the organization and would have a clear career path within the organization. On top of all that, very often organizations keep such things secret to their organizations because it's their secret sauce. It makes them competitive. This is not true with this team. They have been very generous about sharing their experiences with Saturn, with IEEE software and articles that they have published at ICSI and other conferences so that other organizations can imitate what they've done and they can learn from other organizations. So I am very pleased to present this award to the Siemens Health and Ears because this is exactly what we hoped would be the result of promoting a software architecture practitioner conference, growing this community, and the kinds of efforts we'd see in organizations. The two people who are here to receive this award is someone, Francis Polish, whom I've known for a very long time, and who has been active in, well, maybe not that long, longer for me than you, um, <laughs> who has been active in this community for a long time, and she was the founder of the software um, initiative within Siemens company wide. And Jurgen Valpel, who has taken it, implemented it within the health and health and ears, Siemens Health and Ears division, and has been instrumental in making sure that the architects have a career path within the organization. So I hope you'll join me in congratulating their efforts as they receive this award. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Linda. We really uh, very much appreciate this. We have been uh, very inspired by uh, the work that you personally have been driving and your team and the activities of the Software Engineering Institute have really been a, a beacon for us. And we are really, as you, as you mentioned, we are very glad to be a part of this community and to also uh, be able to provide back to this community. So. Uh, we are very uh, glad to uh, receive this award. So we would like to try to explain to you some of the highlights of this topic because it's in our interest that you also try to see whether you can, can uh, reuse some of the aspects that we have uh, done in our company also in your, uh, in your uh, practitioner activities that you have here in your various uh, companies. So maybe you're going to start. Yeah. 
also for me, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and, and really it's, it's a real honor because also personally, um, when, when I've heard we, we got the award, I looked a little bit back when we started this endeavor, this journey. Yeah? And it was in 2009, the first discussions about uh, curriculum, software architects started. And this is then now 10 years, basically. And um, I was involved on the healthcare side, and I still call it healthcare because personally, this health engineers thing is a little bit difficult to spell. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I was involved since then, and over the, the last 10 years, we really rolled this out with um, highs and lows, and yeah, we want to share what we've learned there, and we want to share why we think this is a real good thing, what, we, what, what we've done there, and um, yeah, that's it for the first. And then, short commercial break. <laughs> Short commercial break, especially because you mentioned already Siemens is not being perceived as a software company. Yeah? When you think about Siemens, the United States might be a little bit different, but, but especially in, in, in Germany, it's about trains, it's about former times coffee makers, refrigerators, whatever. Yeah? The European folks probably know we are out of it. Yeah? We are still in the infrastructure, but I mean, software was not so. so, so uh, in the focus. Siemens Health and Years is still a part of Siemens. We are now an, 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 an own company, um, own AG, but still being owned by, by Siemens for the, for the most of the part. In the market where we're in, and this is the medical device market basically, we are, yeah, we claim to be the, 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 the market leader in most of the things what we are doing there. Our revenue is still quite high. This is high. This is the revenue of, of Siemens Health and Years only. We are in 70 countries and have roughly 50,000 people worldwide employed. Only Siemens Health and Years. So we are probably a big company. You can see here down there what we are doing, whom we are serving. It's, it's pretty, I found pretty impressive. What is our Gene, our commitment, our commitment and our gene is basically in innovation and technology. That's what really drives us. And that, personally, I'm convinced also the reason why we are so good in the things we are doing, our modalities, CT scanners, MRs. And when you look in there, what we do in terms of R&D, we spent roughly one and a half billion um, um, euro in, in, in R&D. We have roughly 8,000 employees being active in R&D, and out of this 8,000, 4,000 are software developers. That's a number you normally don't see, but I mean, it's very, very impressive, and it's very, I think, it's, it's a big number. Yeah? For a company not being perceived as a software company, this is a high number, personally, I think. Um, we have, R&D facilities worldwide. Yeah, we are really spread all over the, the, the world. Um, and um, as you can see, we have a lot of uh, so-called key experts. We'll come to this a little bit later. And we have a lot of research collaborations worldwide. Um, also here, you see what we are producing there. A lot of patents, a lot of digital images. It's, it's really... Um, uh, yeah, a lot of data what we're doing there. Where do we come from? And this is a real long story of success, I would say, yeah. The whole thing started around 1900, yeah. This was when Röntgen and some other guys de developed, or de developed, they uh, uh, discovered the X-ray systems, yeah. And over the time, in the former times, Siemens and Siemens Healthcare was really a hardware company, yeah. We produced X-ray tubes and so whatever you can imagine there. But over the time this changed really, yeah? And when you look down here in, in, in this area, it was around 2000, we already recognized that hardware alone doesn't work anymore. Software was more prominent. All the things, what we, the images we produced there went from analog to digital, yeah? So we needed software, we needed appropriate, um, soft and hardware. 
And already um, around 2000, we developed our first imaging software platform. This was Syngo called. I was um, at this time, um, I was in this department. This was really a platform across most of our modalities, CT, MR, underneath the imaging uh, platform was a common one. Over the time, this developed further and further and further. Um, the connectivity came more and more in the, into the focus, so it was not a single system anymore. It was a computer network. We had to connect all the things. Other information uh, popped in, not only images anymore, but also patient information, lab information, and we had, had to handle all this stuff. Still, we were driven by the idea of having platforms. And this, already in this very early times, the idea of software and software architecture become very important for us. Because a platform without an appropriate architecture, I mean, doesn't work basically. Yeah? Because, I mean, you have application on top of it, and you need something like an architecture. So the, 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 the architecture was already very important for us, um, but not so prominent. Yeah? Um, it worked out pretty well, but throughout our way here, we recognized some learnings on the way in becoming more digital and more digital, um, also in the terms of the workflow underneath. Yeah? So architecture was still, in the beginning, very important to us. Not so important um, that we already developed from the beginning on such a curriculum. Yeah? This was around 2000, and I mentioned earlier, we started the curriculum in 2009. Question, what took us nine years to come up with the, with, the, with the curriculum. One real learning was we had a very good running imaging platform, a very good thing. But at some point in time with new deployment scenarios, we had to change this architecture. We had to migrate, to, to develop a new one. And then we learned it somehow on the hard way, yeah? that this architecture was fine for a single workstation, basically, but not for a network system. Um, I was, at this point in, t in time, responsible for a software and, and system architecture group, and the first step was, okay, let's expand the existing, uh, existing platform in a, in a new deployment scenario. It didn't basically work out, because, I mean, this was wonderful modular monolith, yeah? It was perfect on, on, on paper, but terrible to, to, to change. And this was the learnings here where we really discovered and said we need to em emphasize more this, this, this software architecture. We need to bring more our people on the way to architect the software, not to develop software, to architect software. Yeah? This was one of our learnings. And this still goes on, especially because we really discovered in our area that the digitalization of healthcare becomes more and more prominent. Yeah. Okay. And especially the digitalization of healthcare that, uh, that Jürgen mentioned um, it, at the end of the, of the last slide is really important for us and it's really the core of, this, of the software topic. And now um, I would like to, um, uh, I'd like to mention also that um, the um, software uh, the 4,000 software art, uh, developers that we have, uh, about half of them are in the development center, which is uh, based mostly in India, but in also several other places in the world. Um, and it is sort of the software heart of, of our company. So you may know, uh, for example, Gerd Höfner, who is the driver of uh, the development center in India. And I would like to, um, um, the topic bridges was, came up earlier in the slide roulette. <laughs> and I would like to uh, ask you to sort of picture the topic of architects as living bridges. And so maybe this is one of the potential takeaways of this topic. This uh, photo shows uh, a, um, a bridge uh, that is made out of roots, roots of a uh, rubber tree in India, in the northeast part of India. It's uh, very wet. And the uh, people there are uh, very innovative and built over the time uh, a living bridge across this river. And so they basically take the 
aerial roots of this rubber tree and train it, so to speak, to go across the river. And they do this from, from both sides. And uh, then this becomes a very, very strong and very flexible way across the river. And you know, art architecture is so much about the interfaces. And this is a way of having really a very strong and effective and flexible and living uh, interface between these two. And that is an important aspect for me that this is sort of one of the key ideas that we try to instill in our software architects. What's the role of the architect in these systems? They have so much interfaces to other parts of the organization. They need to be trained and encouraged and see it as part of their responsibility to reach across the aisle to the other side. And this is uh, why I think that this um, kind of vision is maybe appropriate. Because in the past, where we've had more waterfall kinds of systems, if you imagine these are the two sides, we optimize these, these two parts perfectly so that the, say, the development and the product management, they work perfectly and they're totally effective and 100% optimized. But if they don't overlap, if they don't have any closer synchronization, it's very brittle. Some piece of wind will come along and knock these apart. So we need to ensure that these are more integrated together and that makes a really, really strong and flexible bond that can't be taken apart. And that's what I see when I see this picture and I hope later you can see it also when you see this picture of this rope bridge and the architect as a, as a living bridge. So we teach our architects and encourage them to be responsible not only for an architect and having some you know, PowerPoint somewhere and just early in the, in the project they're architects the whole time. They are taught to reach out to their product management, to the testing, to the R&D management, to the business. And they are given in this program the skills, both technical skills and communication skills, to be able to, to, be able to do this. And that's what I think that it's really important that they go over the middle point of this, of this river and they reach out and really grab the hands of the roll on the other side. And this uh, is what I, we're trying to show in this uh, diagram here. The software architect is a really, really core part of our product development. And they explicitly reach out to these named roles and also other roles. And as I mentioned, the, not only the technical competence, but the communication topic is extremely important here. I think it, I was referred to, I think, in a presentation yesterday that uh, Philippe Kruchten was uh, saying, you know, what, does, what do architects do, right? And the big chunk, half of it or so, was technical topics, and the other half is communication. And we underscore that with bright red uh, under, underlines in our training. We have a really, really strong focus on the social skills, leadership skills um, in, in our program. And uh, Jurgen will uh, yeah. describe that in a little bit more detail. And especially what I mentioned earlier, when we had when we, when we changed our or had to change our old uh, imaging platform to a new one, yeah, and new deployment scenarios, yeah, this was exactly what was was uh, Francis was was mentioning. I talked to our chief uh, software architect at this point in time and told him, I mean, this is a monolith. Why and and, and why not? Yeah, yeah. The, the typical answer at this point in time, what you got is, yeah, we developed it. Um, the other thing was not required. We did what was specified. Second question, did you talk with the requirement engineer, the product, uh, product line manager? Answer, no, why? Yeah. So it was a very isolated thing. Yeah, they, they, they did the best they can. They, and they were really good. But I mean, they didn't understand what was the problem they should solve. And it was exactly why when we started this, 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 this curriculum, we said, Key is we need to be clear on the competencies our software architects really need. Yeah? And then we came up, and you see this here in, in, in our spider diagram, yeah? we came up with, um, with a profile, a profile in terms of a ready senior software architect should have these competencies. This was our, our approach. We clustered this a little bit in terms of business strategy, case understanding, development, legal issues, requirement engineering, software architecture, leadership, social skills, software processes, testing, and quality, and, and came up basically with through competence levels, yeah? Basic, advanced, and expert. And then we sat down together and discussed and defined what 
what the level of expertise we expect from our senior software architects and our software architects. And you, you see here basically two lines. The blue one is the software architect. This is our junior type. We don't call it junior because it's already, already, uh, it's, it's a software architect. We, we didn't uh, use the word junior because out of um, more, yeah, out of several reasons. And we had a senior software architect, yeah, because I mean, this is the guy who also should lead then the software architects. Yeah? And you can see here that the line of the senior software architect, yes, I mean, they should have a clear strength in all the architecture stuff, no doubt about it. I mean, especially the, the, the senior software architects, yeah, I mean, they need to have it, it's a must have. But when you look here around the, the spider diagram, what you also see, we are very, very um, uh, explicit about the social skills and the management skills they should develop. Because this was, in our experience, one of the weakest points in our existing uh, software architects, because they were technically, they were good, really. They knew what to do. But, I mean, in terms of social skills, in terms of management, talking with people, in terms of understanding the real requirements, challenging, challenging the requirements, understanding the business case at least to amount they need, they didn't. Yeah? And this was exactly what we, why we, we said, this is the profile we, we want to have, and the, the program really goes in this direction and try to develop the people, especially also in this terms of leadership and social skills. Well, how, how did we do that? We did do that basically um, in Siemens. We had at this point in time a thing, it was called core learning programs around several very important roles, mostly management roles and business administration roles because, I mean, these guys are really important. Yeah? Um, we had so-called core learning programs. Yeah? This was a, um, a thing driven out of Munich, central Munich, and we thought if software architecture and, 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 and the, 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 the roles are also important, we want to establish also such a core learning program. Um, and this is really a curriculum um, based on already existing and new developed courses we had in our training organization. Out of that, with some additional um, content, with a very different approach, we developed a curriculum for a software architect, yeah, this is basically here, and for a senior software architect. Yeah. Um, we did this also for system architects and test uh, architects, yeah, but I mean, this was the, 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 the core was senior software architect and software architect. Yes, we had also in mind that we, when the, 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 the colleagues are ready and gets, got certified, that they should work then on different types of projects. Yeah? So we had a um, three-type um, classification of projects. Our pro class A projects are the big ones, the real business important ones. We want to have a senior guy working on that. And mostly it's a senior guy with a team of, uh, of some software architects, not junior guys. Yeah? And then we have class B and C projects, midterms and, 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 and smaller projects. And in a way, and this is the reason for this pyramid, yeah, the, the, the colleagues should in their career, first when they join or ha have interest in, in, in architecture, then they can pick single courses out of the, the, the overall portfolio. And then, if, then they can apply for a software architect and afterwards they can apply for a senior software architect. So it's a clear way up here, a clear career path, what we, what, what we are showing them. Yeah? And this was basically new. It was because new for a technical thing. For management, this was known stuff. Yeah? Management roles, business administration guys, they knew this already. For the technical people, this was completely new. Yeah. Um, yep. Oops. What was the goal? Yes. Too fast. Okay, <laughs> so uh, when we were establishing this, it was very important for us to not just have just a training. Also, as I mentioned before, not just the technical training, but the training and the and the expert um, and the communication aspects. But not just the training, but also 
making sure to understand all of the various roles in, in a very uh, good way so that the, this communication to these other roles, you'd have a common understanding, a common language, you could, the architect could meet the product management uh, person in the elevator and be able to convey very quickly, like the architecture elevator, what the, the important aspects are uh, that need to be discussed. But also, uh, the networking aspect has been a very important aspect that we want to, within an organization, get the software architects and the system architects and the test architects to be able to uh, meet together and to uh, discuss topics with a common language, and also across the various disciplines. So having the, the software architects also um, get together and improve things overall for the organization regarding architecture. And also this certification topic was a very, very important one for us, especially to get this program really established in our organization. And this is um, some of the topics that will be coming up now um, from Jurgen about how we went about this uh, certification uh, aspect. Yep. Um Certification is one of the key issues what we had there. I mean, this was also new to the organization. It was not just sending a well-known uh, well colleague to a course for one week. He comes back with a nice piece of paper, that's it. In this course, we really, from the beginning on, yeah, discussed about a certification, so some sort of a testing where we can ensure the quality of the of the of the of the software architect. Yeah? This was the basic idea what we had. How did we do that, or how we are doing that currently? Um, this is our process we developed here at, at Siemens Health in years. Basically, we embedded the, the the overall curriculum and this this career idea for the for the software architects in the yearly performance and development talks we do have in Siemens. So at least once a year, you talk with your manager about where you are, where you want to go, and blah, 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 blah. And out of this list, together with HR, you can suggest a candidate, a well-known senior software developer, to become a software architect or afterwards a senior software architect. Then this list is basically being compiled by a central um, coordination. Yeah. Um, and um, so the nomination here is also together with the normally head of the business line. So this is a CEO, this is a management uh, guy who really must nominate finally this, this candidate. Then the central coordination, then the nominees must really apply for this program. It's not just that I get your name. Don't, um, it's they, they really need to develop um, a documents a senior software architect for instance They need to describe their current architecture and need to really argue why they want to become a senior software architect So it's not a just a sending in your CV your resume. They really need to argue on an architectural topic why they think this program is the best program for them and we check the motivation then, having all this documentation here, there is an interview. It's an assessment. So after receiving all the documents, the documents get reviewed, they get evaluated, then the candidates get um, invited, and there is a, basically, in, in, in this point in time, a one-hour interview between a functional expert and an art HR guy, really trying to figure out if the, the things the, 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 the nominee has documented there are real. Yeah? And they really need to prepare for that. Out of this overall process here, we develop normally per year, I call it normally a short list. Yeah? So we have over the years, the, the number for senior software architects ranged a bit between 10, 20, 30 applications per year. Out of this, we normally derive three to four candidates per year. Yeah? It's really coming up with a ranked listing where we say after this process, we probably have a very good profile of the candidates and we can check if the profile of the candidates fit to the program they apply for. This is really an initial 
quality check. We want to check where are the, 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 the guys at this point in time and want to see if this profile from the, from the, from the nominee, from the candidate, fit to the program we have. Yeah? That's basically what we, what we do here. This sounds, in the first run, very technical. It sounds like testing. It sounds like they can apply, and afterwards it's, they get accepted, yes or no. But that's the wrong notion here. That's basically the result afterwards. But what we are doing here is basically, we call it a development talk. Yeah? If you have a candidate perfectly fitting to the, to the profile, I, I mean, it, that's, that's the easy part. Yeah? I mean, he's experienced, he knows everything, fine. They, 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 they will go to the, to the, to the uh, program. But often you have candidates, um, they, they're not ready for the program. Throughout this process, you can really develop with them a an, an, an clear idea saying, okay, this year you're not on the top three list. You're on place whatever, but think about working on a specific other topic. When you work on this topic, you can develop in the function of a senior software architect. So we really give them on the, the, the topic software architecture an idea how these guys develop themselves. Yeah? And that's, that's the basic idea behind, behind this um, um, health and year specific process. And this was also very new for the, for, the, for the organization because, I mean, that's very unusual. Normally we do have team leads having a bunch of people there, they are not really able to discuss with a software architect a specific development in the terms of software architecture. They are not, they are channel managers. This is the, 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 the add-on we, we, we produce here. After, yeah, I need to speed up a little bit, yeah. Um, after that, um, then there is a second step. Then they really apply for the, for the, for the, for the uh, uh, program. There's a, there's a second assessment there. Then they go to a program, as you can see here. It basically runs roughly a year, yeah. Um, there are several phases. Um, there are several workshops there. In between the different uh, phases and the workshops, there are really, we call it quality gates. They're really tests. They have to pass these quality gates in order then to come to a final assessment. And again, it's an assessment center. This assessment center here at the end really then checks if the, the, the candidate has the level of expertise and knowledge and skills we um, expect from a software architect. Throughout the program, so we develop the, the, the uh, candidate from the current status to the status, to the profile status we, we expect. That's the idea in, underneath. The assessors here, this is, was also one thing what we also introduced here, then are real R&D software development managers because, I mean, these are basically the customers afterwards. They need to judge if this guy is good or not. They are trained and they are doing the assessments. If he then uh, passes the assessment, he will get an award normally in a special event with management support. It's something special. One thing or two things we need to, to mention here also is the way how this program really runs. Um, it's not a program like you go there, you, 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 you learn new thing, uh, things about pattern, uh, DevOps, whatever. It's, it's the, the way we implemented this program here is that we're using coaching and mentoring on current projects. So if a software architect applies and gets accepted to this, to this program, he brings in his current project and all the topics being teached throughout the program are working on this, his specific um, uh, project. This creates immediate impact. Yeah, because, I mean, he goes back in, 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 in business and got some feedback to his latest architectural ideas, whatever. Yeah? And um, this also is very important for the, the exception in the organization. Yeah. And um, yes, again, I mentioned here, it's embedded in our uh, development talks. This is also very important. It's not a technical thing. It's a real personal de uh, HR development uh, 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 process what we did there. Yeah? And there is a career path in behind. Um, we meanwhile developed the idea of we do have uh, key experts in our organization. So basically 
um, the candidates here can get uh, the, the be rewarded as a key expert in software architecture. That's what's what's going on there. Okay, so you're going to explain now some of the process aspects here, but I would like to really, um, maybe I'm a bit preaching to the choir here, especially in this community, but these people are so passionate about software architecture. The people that are coming out of this program, they are just very enthused, they feel, feel re responsible. They really come out of this program this one year later changed. They've Really, sometimes we've seen some sort of very technically oriented people come in and their eyes just, their horizons just get much more broadened and they really have a different way of looking at the topic, a much more holistic view on the topic, a good overall understanding. And they're so enthusiastic and they're busy doing all kinds of stuff, extra stuff within the organization. They particular groups that have gone through the program. They organize special events, bar, bar camps, hackathons. They network, as I mentioned, across the company. There's this mentoring going on. The, the architects serve as assessors for the next generation. They have the community spirit that we're trying to also do in giving back this kind of thing to the our overall architecture community. They're doing the same thing within theirs, and they're very passionate about this topic, and they really want to help each other. They are involved in the evolution of the next content, so bringing things like DevOps, cybersecurity, other topics into the program. And they also, maybe especially interesting here with all the uh, like ATAM assessments that are well known here, there's also cross-company architecture reviews that are done. And so these are extremely beneficial and they're very trustful, right? The people can really explain to their colleagues that they've maybe been to the same training with and it really open the, their, their hearts about the challenges that they have and to get improvement guidance, really hands on. And so this is the internal passion and culture that we have uh, seen with this program is really remarkable. And um, as Linda mentioned at the beginning, we've also been very open about explaining some of these topics uh, at various conferences. So we've had, for example, um, there was a panel here years ago on the like Raytheon, Boeing, and so on, the comparison of the different certification approaches or uh, Frank Bushman's articles in IEEE software. Um, several presentations here at Saturn on, for example, the networking, networking topic. Okay, next slide. And so we, the way we've uh, handled the, the topic here of the team, we have a team of eight people that are, uh, most of them are from Siemens Healthineers, but also Frank Bushman of Siemens Corporate Technologies and uh, Matthias Buckert, who is with the uh, training, the organization, um, so learning and education part of Siemens um, uh, company, and the rest of us from Healthineers, several of them are uh, senior software architects. Um, we're sort of the core people that have been driving this topic, but of course there are many, many more people that I've tried to represent in this word cloud that have made very strong and important contributions to, this, to these uh, topics, so from, from various aspects. And so it's really, it's a, it's a team effort. It's this whole topic, right, with the development and deployment of this program, just like a computer program is really, it's, it's a team effort. Yeah. And, um, uh, then I think we have some yeah. uh, closing yeah. remarks. And I want just just uh, one point I want to add. We really try to to leverage also the the the, the experienced uh, senior software developers in order to develop the program. Yeah. So for instance, these two two guys here. Yeah, they are one of the first senior uh, senior software architects who got certified. Yeah, and we really use them also to further develop the program. Yeah, because I mean that's very important uh, for us to 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 get also better and better. What are the, the key success factors and, and, and takeaway message? I would say one thing is high quality content. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds simple, but it isn't. It's really high quality content and the way we are training. This coaching, mentoring thing I mentioned on their, on their, on their project, on their own project, is very, on, on the training side, it's a very effort-driven thing. I mean, if you have 15 people in a program, you have 15 different projects you need to, to, to coach and mentor throughout the program. This is effort, yeah? Yes, and the whole product life cycle is, 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 is to be addressed there. It's not only architecture, it's, it's the real surrounding also, yeah? And this, this common language, what we mean by have, is very important and very, very, very helpful. 
hands on. That's what I what I said. Working on their on their project. Um, career paths recognition is is one key. Believe me or not, they need to be recognized in the organization that this is a valuable role, and then they are willing to work for it. Yeah, and that's 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 one thing. And the program, meanwhile, is being seen as desirable. So the people want to go to the program. Yeah, I could talk a little bit about that, but the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, right. And front loading. Again, a simple thing: choose the right candidates. The, we, we did several tests in terms of how we, 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 we selected the people. Uh, do we have assessments, which type of assessments? Yeah, we now have a very stringent thing in there. We, we sometimes skipped it, the quality went down. Yeah, so it's very important for, I think, that, that you really choose the right people. Um, it's very, um, it's well established. Use HR processes, that's, that's one thing I can recommend. <laughs> yeah, use them. Um, but don't let the HR people do it alone. They are not able to, 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 to talk to, to functional experts. They can't. Yeah? And when you want motivated people, especially when they are really interested in a specific topic, you need to, 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 to get them by the topic and motivate them by the topic. That's something HR people can't do. Yeah? You need here a combination of functional experts and HR. Yeah, that's very important. And the holistic thing we mentioned earlier. I mean, after the course, the software architects should feel responsible for the overall story, not only for their thing. That's it. If there are questions, requests, whatever, there are our email addresses. Thank you very much. <laughs>